This is about the preparation of the BMW S1000RR for this year's Texas Mile. Two years ago, I'd gone 193.3 on this thing. Last year, I didn't even get that good, despite putting all the Alpha Racing carbon body kit on. I know it's more slippery. It's doing more in the second half. Last year, I just had a problem, if you remember, with keeping the nose down at takeoff. It's gotten so light and everything. Like I said, it goes like hell in the second half, but taking off was just terrible. I could not launch right. The front end just wanted to stare at the clouds and it tried to buck me off at 60 mile an hour. So I made several changes this year and for the big mods, I've got videos in the description below with links to show how to do things like lower it, how to put a new kickstand on, how to extend it. But what I started with is lowering it. The reason you want to lower it is because the smaller you make the bike, the less area going into the wind, which means less drag, which means you can go faster. So I lowered the whole bike, front suspension and rear. You wanna make sure that you do it the same amount, both front and rear, because if you don't, then you start jacking with the rake angle over here on the front end. And if you get it too low, it might become unstable at high speeds and you'll crash at a high speed. If you get too much, then possibly it might be more apt to pop up on you. So it's just important to get the geometry right. So I started with the front end, took everything off, pulled the tubes up, tried to go for about a two inch lowering, then did the back end, got that two inches lower, also did the kickstand to get that two inches lower because obviously if the whole bike moves down, you need a lower kickstand or it's not gonna sit right anymore. So did all that work, took the bike for a little test run around the block, washed it, everything was great, got inside, pushed on the handlebars to move the bike in the garage and the right clip-on fell off. So what had happened is by moving the forks up in the triple trees too much, there wasn't enough meat before the forks neck down to hold that triple tree. So they were just barely hanging on by like maybe an eighth inch of actual full diameter material. So I had to start over from scratch again take it all apart, and I went to a one inch lowering only, that's about all I could get out of it, with the tubes up in the trees, reconnected the clip-ons, readjusted the rear end to make everything one inch lower, still have the two inch lower kickstand, but that's fine, and then I put the straps on and got the strap set. Straps, in this case, are not being used for lowering. I only use the straps to take care of the rider sag. In other words, when I'm on it with all my gear and weight, that's where I want it strapped down to. But what it does is it keeps the forks from telescoping if it's under torque and the front end wants to come up. If the front end is on the ground, the tire, and the forks can extend, when you gas it, this whole body part could come up on you and then eventually pull the wheel up with it. When you have it strapped, the bike has to pull the weight of the entire wheel and everything to come off the ground. So it just makes it a little bit less prone to wheeling. So I did all that, got the strap set right, put everything back together there. And then in the rear, the big modification was putting these extensions on the swing arm. Now these swing arm extensions are adding about, you know, roughly five inches or so to the wheelbase, which is important because that gives me more wheelbase, takes more torque back here to, put, to pick that front end up. So that was a big deal for me. That means I had to get a new chain. So I bought the new chain and had to get that all adjusted and everything. As I adjusted the axle back here, what I was seeing is that the brake line for the rear brakes was getting pretty tight. And I was hoping I could avoid replacing that brake line because you got to get inside here to the ABS pumps and everything. So I stretched it back as far as I could, got that line pretty tight, took the bracket work off and everything. But I got that set. I started with a 44 tooth sprocket in the back. That's what I had on last year. And I brought along the 43 and the 42 sprocket. So in case I maxed out at the 44, I could adjust to the 43 and the 42 because in the Texas Mile and events like this, it's always better to start 
at a lower speed max and work your way up. If you just start too high, you'll never have the torque to get up to where you want. The other thing I did is replace the Michelin Road 6s on front and back with the Prelli Super Corsa Diablo V3s or whatever, which are supposed to be a lot lighter and stickier. And so that was gonna be important because I kind of thought if I fix the wheelie problems with the swing arm extensions, then the next problem is going to be that the tires might slip. So again, lighter weight tires, less weight for the bike, less rotating mass, especially combined with these carbon fiber wheels, the BSTs on it, and sticky to get as much grip as I could with it. Beyond that, it was the normal safety wire stuff, the rear axle nut, the oil drain plug. This year, I had to do the oil filter, had to be safety wired. They told me about it last year, but they said since it was brand new, they weren't gonna worry about it, but this year I knew they'd be checking that. I did my pinch bolts on the front forks, and then of course you've got the kill switch up here on the clip-on. For tire pressure, I started that the same place I was last year, which I think was 39 front and 42 back, if I remember right. Um, that seemed to be the place last year where I could go as high as I could but any higher than that resulted in being a little bit too stiff and that thing just chattering to where it felt unstable going down the track. In addition to the bike mods, I also lost 20, 25 pounds myself, which is a big deal. You think about how much we pay for things like carbon fiber bodies to save a few pounds. Well, this year I actually dropped, like I said, 20 to 25 pounds myself, uh, just being a whole lot more disciplined about diet and exercise. So that should give me a big advantage too. And that should be everything, so me and my bike should be all ready for the Texas Mile this year. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline!